So in this episode of the Bulls, the Bears, and the Bats, I'm going to tell you how I made 170% returns on the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is the 500 largest companies that trade on the U.S. stock exchanges, and they're not really seen as a really sexy investment. Even though over the decades, over the century, they've seen profits of like 10 to 12% every single year on average. I was able to make 170%. How was I able to do that? I did it with something called leveraged ETFs. Now, that sounds like a really loaded word and really complicated and intimidating if you're not sure what a leveraged ETF is. So let's break it down. What is an ETF? An ETF, in the example of the S&P 500, you can think of these 500 companies being individual companies, and if I wanted to invest, I would have to buy each and every one of those individual companies and then average them out across the board. Or I can buy an ETF, Exchange Traded Fund, which is basically a bag filled with stocks, commodities. In the case of the S&P 500, the ETF is just going to be those big 500 companies in America. And that's cool. The fact that you can just invest in one financial instrument and get exposure to 500 individual stocks. Now, leverage just means that they're using financial derivatives or financial tricks to amplify and magnify the returns, the gains, or the losses of the S&P 500. Now, how do they do that? They do that with things like futures, option contracts, even debt. The important thing for you to realize is that they're magnifying the S&P 500. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to discuss three types of ETFs. We're going to talk about SPY, which is the SPY index, which basically covers the S&P 500 to a T. Then we're going to talk about SSO, which is so, so good at covering the S&P 500, but times two, which means if the S&P 500 goes up 2%, SSO goes up 4% in a day. If the S&P 500 goes down 3%, SSO will go down 6% in a day. And then we're going to discuss something called SPXL. And that is the ticker for the leveraged ETF that's three times the S&P 500, which again means S&P 500 goes down 2%, SPXL is down 6%. If it goes up 3%, SPXL is up 9%. And what I really want to talk about is that all these experts, they always, always say leveraged ETFs are not a long term investment. You're going to end up losing money. Never invest in leveraged ETFs like SSO or SPXL for the long term because there's something called volatility drag and decay. And we'll get all to that in this video. But I actually disagree with that. And I want this to be a little bit of like a learning discussion so that you guys can inform me because I understand that a little bit differently. And so I'm going to share that. I'm going to show some examples and I'm going to show how I was able to make 170% returns using these leveraged ETFs for the long term. The way I see it, if you're sure that the S&P 500 is going to keep going up and the trajectory will be up or will be going down, it's absolutely fine to buy a leveraged ETF for the long term. Where you don't want to get stuck is if you see price action start doing a zigzag and going sideways. That's where a lot of your profits will get eaten up. And uh, this is something that we'll cover in the video. But I disagree with the experts that just say leveraged ETFs should never be used for long term. It should be day trades or week trades, but never long term. I completely disagree with that. They make it seem like it's uh, the New York City subway. Like leveraged ETF can only take you from point A to point B and very quickly. But if you stay around on the subway, something terrible is bound to happen to you. So if you're a seasoned trader, you might think that this next part is not for you because you understand all this stuff. But I'm telling you, I'm going to cover something that I think is a little bit new. So please do watch it through and then give me your thoughts in the comment section because I'm trying to learn alongside you. And then later, I'm going to cover not only how I made the 170% returns off the S&P 500 in a year, but I'm also going to cover why I went in and what was my thought process and strategy for investing in the S&P 500 when I did and why I held through all this time. Okay, so I'm going to try my best here to get my points across in an easy to understand seamless manner. So just bear with me. There's going to be some gems here. So first of all, if you want to follow along, you can go to google.com forward slash finance and do the same thing alongside with me. 
So first we're going to look at the S&P 500 ETF that tracks the Standard & Poor's 500 index. So this would be the SPY index. And if you type in SPY, you'll see this chart here. Now I'm going to ask you to navigate to the one year mark so that we could look at what happened over the span of the last 365 days. And bear in mind, this number here is showing the percentage, whereas this number here is showing the actual dollar change. So as we could see here, the S&P 500 did really well. I mean, it's almost a linear line starting from a year ago. And so it gained 43.35%. Now, if we go ahead, we can compare that to one of these leveraged ETFs. So we're going to do the one that amplifies the S&P 500 by two. And by doing that, we click compare two, and we can type in SSO, which promises to double the S&P 500. And again, remember, that's double the losses or double the winnings. So as you can see here, it does outperform the S&P 500 and it does seem like it's doing double the amount. And actually, if you look at the percentages down here, so as I move this, pay attention to these two percentages. So the S&P 500, it gained only 43.35% if you invested exactly a year ago, whereas SSO, the leveraged ETF gained 102.29%. It over delivered and gave you more than double your returns. Now let's see if we compare that to the leveraged ETF that promises three times the returns. And that would be SPXL. So if we click that, we can see all three. So the light blue is the SPXL, the blue is the percentage change in the S&P 500, and the orange yellow, that is gonna be your two times leveraged ETF. And as you see here, they do a pretty good job. They are running the same exact pattern all the way up. However, the yellow and the blue is amplifying that change. So if we look at the end, and again, pay attention to these percentages, if I go all the way to the end, we will see that the S&P three times leveraged ETF actually returned 173.78%, which is much more than three times 43.35. So it over delivered as well. And this is what I'm talking about when I say that these leveraged ETFs, they do very, very well when the trend is going in the same direction for a long period of time, whether it's going up or it's going down. Now, before we continue, I just want to show you something that's interesting. On this section here, so this is where the market dropped through the floor when we had the pandemic scare, you'll see that the three times leveraged S&P 500 actually lost almost 10% on your investment if you invested five years ago, whereas the other ones were had a profit of 10% and 11% respectfully. So they were close to one another. Why? That's because you lost all these gains. Look at how much gains you had with the double and triple, but when it went down, you lost even below what the actual S&P 500 is doing. This is important to note because you have to realize that you had extreme gains, 257%, 157%, as opposed to the regular 63.62% of the S&P 500, and over a matter of a month, you would have lost it all and more with a three times leveraged ETF, and you would have gone all the way down to just an 11.34% profit if you held the two times leveraged ETF. So also, as I've mentioned before, a lot of experts argue that you should never use leveraged ETF vehicles as long-term investments. Although here we can see that they've done quite well. And let me explain to you why they say that. It all has to do with something called volatility drag or the multiplier effect. You can think of it as the decay of your investment. Now I set up something here because this is a difficult concept to explain. I set something up that hopefully will be quite easy to follow. So what we're going to do here is we're going to fill in these hypothetical scenarios. So in the beginning, we invested $10,000 into the S&P 500 index, which is SPY. Then $10,000 into the leverage two times S&P 500, which is SSO. And then $10,000 in SPXL, which is three times the S&P 500. So this is your initial investment on January 1st. Now we're going to see what happens when the market changes on January 2nd, what happens to our January 2nd balance, so on and so forth. So just try to follow this along because you're going to learn something really interesting here. Okay, so let's imagine that on January 2nd, the S&P 500 dropped by 10%. 
this is what would occur. The S&P 500 would drop by 10%. The two times leverage would drop by 20%. Three times leverage would drop by 30%. Let's see what would happen to our January 2nd balance. So simple enough, you lost 10%, you have 9,000, you lost 20%, you have 8,000, you lost 30%, you have 7,000. Now on January 3rd, we have a gain back of 10%. So now we see something interesting here. It gains back 10%, so now you go to 9,900. Now you might think you would have went to 10,000 because you dropped 10%, then you gained 10%. But remember, this isn't dollar values, this is percentages. And percentages work a little different. So because 10% of 9,000 is 900, when you add that to 9,000, you only get 9,900. So you would actually be down $100 here. So you would think that the two times leverage ETF, you should be down $200. But that's not what happens. Because 20% of 8,000 is going to be 1,600. When you add that to 8,000, you get 9,600. So you're actually down four times. You're at $400 loss. And if you look at the three times leverage ETF, it, the picture is even worse. You're down $900. And this is what volatility drag is. So now let's take a look at what happened on January 4th, hypothetically. So on January 4th, the market went down by 15%, and that means SSO went down by 30%, and the SPXL went down by 45%. So you can see the resulting change in the balance here, and you can see that the losses start to be substantial, whereas you only lost a certain amount here because it's amplified, you're losing a lot. You are down almost 50% on your three times leveraged ETF. And then finally, we're going to see what happened on January 5th, hypothetically. So let's say the market went up by 20%, the S&P 500, up 20%. So this is up 40%. This is up 60%. And now you're actually making money on your SPY index investment because the 20% brought you over the $10,000, which was your initial investment. Now let's see what happens here. You would think that the S&P 500 two times would actually double this 98 you're actually at a loss of almost $600 because you're taking the 40% of a much lower value. When the price goes up and down, you experience the decay in your investment. Here, you see you're almost out $2,000. So then if you look at your actual gains and losses, you'll see that on the SPY, you made $98 over these hypothetical week. And then on the SSO, you are down $592. And on the SPXL, you are down $1,992. Now, I want you guys to comment and tell me if I'm wrong. But the way that I understand volatility drag and the multiplier effect is if there's a zigzag pattern, if things keep going up and down and kind of moving sideways, this is when your investment gets eaten alive and starts to decay. However, if something is just going up and up and up, like we saw over this past year especially, then you're actually seeing really, really nice returns on your investment because it's continually going up and then here the multiplier effect actually helps us out and we see more of a return than the promised two times or three times leveraged etf so now i want to show you how i played the s p 500 i chose to do the sso which is the two times leveraged etf for the s p 500 and my average price for going in was forty two dollars twenty five cents now i didn't invest a lot right i invested a little over four thousand dollars it's nothing to write home about but as you can see the total gain is a whopping 170 0.39%. I mean, this gain on the S&P 500 is super impressive. And if I just did it with the regular SPY index or just investing in these 500 companies, this would be cut by more than half. And the reason that I'm pointing this out is because a lot of the experts, they will tell you, never, ever, ever hold the SSO or SPXL. Never hold these leveraged ETFs for more than you should. But I actually disagree with that. If you are confident in your thesis for why the S&P 500 is going to continue to climb or continue to go down, you should and can hold for long-term periods, but just make sure you don't hold through the zigzag patterns and through the sideways motion. If that starts happening and you start seeing your profits start getting eaten up, that's when it's time to exit your position. But as you can see here, I did really, really well. And this figure is more than double the SPY index. And that is because SSO is a leveraged ETF. And because it was going just in one direction, it more than doubled the SPY index. And again, I want to point out that historically, 
the gain on the S&P 500 is something around 10 to 12.5%. And the fact that I was able to make 170.39% over the past year is amazing. Now, normally I would take it out at this point, but I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to keep holding because if the S&P 500 continues to go on that same trajectory of like a linear upward motion, I'm just going to ride it. And once I see pullbacks or sideways motion of a zigzag pattern, I'm going to remove my investment and then I'm going to go party really hard. So I want to take a second and talk about why I was so sure that the S&P 500 was going to bounce back. Why the 500 biggest companies in America would not only survive something like that, but actually end up thriving in the long term. And luckily, I wasn't the only one that put money in. So I put around five grand in, but I talked a lot of family members into making the same exact decision as I did. And because of that, Thanksgivings are going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be treated a little bit better in the upcoming Thanksgivings, hopefully. So the reason that I knew that the S&P 500 is going to recover, one of the reasons is because I took a look at what happened in 2008 and something similar happened where it dropped so much through the floor and then there was a steady increase up. The top 500 companies in America, they always swim out of these messes. If anything, the government helps them out. If anything, the government prints more money. But they're such behemoths and they do business all over the world. And a lot of them, I started looking at the individual companies and I started making a thesis for why they would do good during this time. Now, sure, some are going to take a hit, but not to the extent that the S&P 500 dropped. It was too ridiculous of a drop and it made sense. Fear, uncertainty, doubt. Everyone panicked. There was tremendous amounts of emotional selling. And this is when I love to just calmly sit down look at the history, then look at the price action, and then think to myself, let me make an objective thesis of what is going to happen in the near to long term. And then I make my short term and my long term investment decisions. And with this, I knew, yeah, this can drag out to be a long time. There could be many waves of it. It could be quite serious, but the world is going to go on. This is not just going to be an apocalypse where everything falls apart and that's it all these companies go down everyone's starving we're just using silver coins and gold bullion and uh barter system and fiat currency doesn't even matter and if that is the case then who cares if i lost money in the stock market right so i knew that if america's going to get through this if the world is going to get through this the s p 500 it's going to end up being just fine now honestly the s p 500 jumped back much faster than i anticipated it to and I would have never held for this long. My whole goal and my whole strategy was I'm investing in SSO when March and February lows hit. And then I saw that the S&P 500 was starting to bounce off of those lows. And then I told myself, there's going to be a gradual increase. There's going to be some bumps, but I'm going to make sure there's no zigzag patterns so that I don't lose a bunch of my leverage DTF. And I knew that if it's going to be gradual, I'm going to ride it. I'm going to be patient. And then when drops start to occur, that is when I will start exiting my position. Maybe all at once, maybe in three or four different moves. And the thing is, is the beautiful thing about the SSO that I invested in is that I would have had to invest more than $10,000 into the S&P 500 at the same exact time and then hold it all there in order to make this amount. But I did it with under $5,000 and I was able to do that because it's a leveraged ETF. And what that means is that I had an extra five or 6,000 that I was then able to put to work. I invested in Square, I invested in Chegg, Zovio, all these other plays that I believed would do well recovering from the pandemic and they did really well so i was able to use that other money and invest it rather than having it tied up in the s p 500 it's not always easy to hold a position when you're winning a lot of money on it so when i made 25 percent, then 40 percent, then 60 percent, then 70 percent, there's always a part of me that's like oh what if another wave comes and it wipes out all of my losses i should just get out of this position but this is when you have to differentiate 
between emotional decision making and logical, rational decision making. And I knew that what's driving my emotions is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And I try to just have a calm mind through that. And in this case, it worked out beautifully. And right now, probably I'm going to keep holding that SSO position. And maybe if I start to see that zigzag, once I start to see like something like a two to 5% drop of the S&P 500, I'll probably bail and I'll take out all my winnings or I'll do it partially. But all in all, I made a healthy amount and I'm happy with it. And I was able to do it because I was an adult about it. A younger me, a younger Eddie investor would have probably pulled out a 25% and bragged about it. But I knew that I had a thesis and that I'm going to stick to my strategy and then I'm not going to be afraid of my winnings. Sometimes we get scared of our winnings. I talk to other investors. It's a common thing. People always talk about being scared of losses, but when you win a lot, you start to get scared. First of all, you feel like, do I even deserve all this? And then you start to think, oh, it went up so much. It must be a fluke. It's all going to go down. But just maintain a level-headed approach to it and be confident and have conviction in your strategies and learn from your strategies. If you're doing something and it doesn't work and you keep losing money, don't keep doing it. And also look into different strategies and see, keep digging into it. Because if I listened to all the people that said, you can never invest in leveraged ETFs for the long term. It's going to come back to bite you. You're going to lose all your money. There's so many articles like from The biggest, most reputable names that say you can lose all your money in leveraged ETFs for the long term. Never invest in a leveraged ETF vehicle for more than yada yada. I did. I did all right. I made 170% return. With all of that being said, please do comment in the comment section and let me know your thoughts. Let's start a discussion. Do you agree with me that leveraged ETFs can be used in the long term if it's just heading towards a gradual trajectory with not a lot of ups and downs? What are your thoughts on the way that I presented it? What has your experience been with leveraged ETFs? I want to learn from you guys. Hopefully you learned something or got some food for thought, even though this isn't financial advice. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope you stay tuned for the next one. This was this week's episode of the Bulls, the Bears, and the Bats. See you next week.